Hello, this is Angela with Parkrose Permaculture. Welcome back for House Fall Friday. Not from my house, but from my minivan. So it's just been a heck of a week. And once again, I find the time that I have to film is while I am sitting in my car in between running kids and my dad to different things. So earlier this week, my dad was in the ER for most of the day and I had to spend the day with him and then shuttling him to the subsequent doctor's appointments and he's moving tomorrow into assisted living. So it's been pack, 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 pack nonstop. And I'm really struggling to find a few minutes of peace and quiet to film this video. I've had my notes done. I've had my notes done for the entire week and I'm finally getting a few minutes to uh, share with you all my thoughts. So I want to talk today about six ways to build relationships in our communities to bolster a resilient community connection. Now we as homemakers have a unique privilege in that we're home a lot. We are present in our homes and in our neighborhoods more than folks who work an outside job. We have the luxury of not having a commute to and from work. So those are extra hours in the day that perhaps we get to spend in the community. We don't have to work in an office. We are in our homes and often out in our gardens and out and about in the neighborhood. And that means that we are in a unique position. I would say um, almost ha have a unique obligation, but perhaps that's too strong of a word. Maybe I mean more a sense of, a, of duty or a privilege to foster community connection. Now, I'm really introverted. I had a video a while back about like what it's like to be an introvert and try and do social media and try and do permaculture and try and have relationships with people. I really value my own alone time. And sometimes um, it's really difficult to get, especially in a house with, with four children. But I also really value my neighbors. Um, I have wonderful next door neighbors on either side of me. My one next door neighbor, Ben, who's helping us raise our poultry, uh, giving us a home to raise them in his garage. He's basically like my brother. He is definitely an uncle to my kids. And I'm just so grateful to have that connection. And I think that when we lack those community connections in our neighborhood, we're really missing out on an important element of being a human being. And homemakers have the ability as folks who are rooted in the community to foster those relationships. We spend our time focused on our homes and on that domestic sphere surrounding our homes. And that means that we are in a unique position to cultivate community. Now, that's not to say that folks who work outside the home uh, don't also want community and don't want connections in their neighborhood. But I have to say as somebody who has moved uh, almost 20 years ago now from the Midwest to the Pacific Northwest, folks in the Pacific Northwest are a little bit more reserved. I remember when uh, the church that we attended when we first moved here didn't really have a committee to bring new mom's meals. And I wanted to get on that committee and I was really committed, like, yes, I love cooking for people. I want to bless people in this way and like bring them meals when they have a new baby or when they have a surgery or an illness, some significant life event where they need extra caretaking. And I remember one of the other mothers in my church had said, you know, Angela, you need to be really careful here in the Pacific Northwest. Folks often uh, view community differently and they might take offense if you show up at their door with a meal or even if you just ask them, like, can I come and serve you in this way? Folks are more reserved. And I found that's true in our neighborhood. When we lived in Texas as a kid, there was like a welcome wagon when we moved in. There was a basket of goodies. Everybody came and knocked on our door and introduced themselves. I have not found that true any place I've lived in Washington or Oregon. Folks are definitely more reserved, but that doesn't mean that we can't have community connections and also respect the fact that in certain areas, the, the subculture may promote more kind of independence and reservedness, but it doesn't mean that we don't need community connection. So I think there's six crucial ways. Now, I'm sure there's loads more than six, but there's six ways I think about fostering relationships and building a resilient community right where I'm at, blooming where you're planted. So I had not had a haircut in over a year. And what prompted this video is that, you know, I really thought about my values as a permaculturist, wanting to build resilient community and a resilient local economy. And I thought, you know what? I need to find somebody who can cut my hair that lives within walking distance of my house. Now in the Park Rose neighborhood, just a few blocks away from me, there's this main street called Sandy, which is now really, really busy. But in ye olden days, it used to be the hub of the neighborhood in the local shopping district. And we have the historic Park Rose and Park Rose Neighborhood Association uh, organizations that are striving to revitalize that area and build up the local businesses and once again, create a hub for community connection and community economics. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna pick a hair salon 
and it's up on that strip. So I just picked one. It's called Lily's Salon. Um, I got a great haircut. It was the cheapest haircut I've ever gotten. I wasn't looking to save money, but it was a really good haircut. I know it doesn't necessarily look the best today because I didn't have time to do anything except hop out of the shower. I've not blow dried it or styled it in any way, and I still think it's a great haircut. And I feel like if I'm if I'm going to promote local economies, if I'm going to promote local community connections, I need to patronize businesses that are within walking distance of my house. Be that they local restaurants or local services that are provided, I think it's really important if we want to foster that strong, resilient economy right where we are, and also support perhaps local business owners who live in our neighborhoods, that we put our money where our mouth is. So for me, I know I will be getting my hair cut in my neighborhood from now on instead of driving somewhere else to a salon elsewhere in Portland. And I think there are other ways that I want to look at what neighborhood businesses can I support. One example that I've been um, really committed to for a long time is not going to the big box hardware stores whenever I can possibly avoid it, but instead going to Park Rose Hardware, our local hardware, again, within walking distance of my house. So number one, prioritize those local businesses. You are prioritizing supporting a vibrant local economy when you do that, and you're likely to run into your neighbors and community members and perhaps get to know them better. Number two is join a community cause. Maybe it's your neighborhood association. I have not been good at this. Um, during the pandemic, I really wanted to try and log into all the Zoom neighborhood association meetings. I'm like, my life is just crazy and I haven't been able to find a way to do it. I want to prioritize that going forward, that I plug into my neighborhood association meetings, that I am involved in what is happening in the Park Rose neighborhood that I participate in those local governance issues. Now, I do uh, I very actively support local politics. I very actively support our county commissioners and our uh, local state representatives. I'm really active in that way, but I want to get even more micro down to a more intimate level and be much more involved in what's happening specifically for the Park Rose neighborhood. And so I want to try and prioritize that. So a community cause may be your neighborhood, neighborhood association meeting. It may be something like um, being on a planning committee for expanding local parks or revitalizing part of your community, like historic park rows. It may be some kind of civic engagement that uh, gets you plugged into what is happening in your neighborhood, how you can improve it, and you'll connect with other folks. So again, this is where homemakers may have a unique privilege and a unique opportunity to have a little extra time to be more civically involved, to volunteer our time and our effort in that way. I know I said at the beginning of this video that I'm kind of running around like a chicken with my head cut off, but my goal as a homemaker is to craft time in my schedule and create a lifestyle in which I am able to plug into those good causes to promote uh, vibrance in my local community. Number three is host a local event for your neighborhood. Way before the pandemic, I had multiple garden tours and potlucks in my backyard for my local gardening clubs. That was a great way I tried to get to know other gardeners in East Portland. I would like to start doing that again once I feel that it is safe. Now, we started a couple of years ago a community bread oven project, and due to family health issues, the pandemic, life situations, I have not finished that bread oven, but it has been probably a 15-year goal of mine to make a bread oven and offer weekly bread firings to anybody who wants to come and use my wood-fired bread oven once a week in the community. I bake bread every day. I would love to be able to bake outside in the summer. I would love to create a hub where other folks could bring their loaf of bread and bake it off at my house. And we could maybe chit chat and have a cup of coffee while it's cooking. Number four may seem really uh, obvious. And it's something, again, I'm not good at all of these things. So when I am... Uh, listing everything in this video, I'm also listing ways in which I need to grow as a person as well. I'm not lecturing you all like, hey, I do all these things perfectly and you need to plug in. The next one is just making an effort to walk around in your neighborhood and say hi and be neighborly. Um, I struggle with this. Again, introvert, it's hard for me to talk to people in real life. I'm often very awkward and perhaps stumble over my words and don't know what to say. A lot of times I'm, I'm going for a walk and I want to listen to my audiobook or a podcast and get quiet time, time away from my family, time where I'm not caught up in my own thoughts, but I'm able to enjoy the book that I'm listening to and enjoy the neighborhood around me. And I'm often not looking to plug into conversations with folks and I need to make a better effort to do that. I walk every single day in my neighborhood, at least three miles. And I should 
should be able to use that better as an opportunity, not only to like see what's going on in the neighborhood and be aware of what's happening um, in the streets surrounding my street, but also like maybe I should make a better effort at getting to know folks, at least being neighborly, being friendly, saying hi, saying, wow, your garden looks really lovely, or I love the color trim that you painted your house, or your dog is super cute whatever, be neighborly, be kind. So for me, I think I'm going to try and make an effort to extend myself in that way and spend a little bit of labor on, you know, promoting at least positive, um, at least as civil and courteous relationships with folks, even if we don't become bosom buddies. Number five is attend neighborhood cleanups. Our neighborhood association president is fabulous at organizing these kinds of things. Either big events where you have a bulk cleanup day where you can come and drop off things. Maybe it is uh, connecting with a local nonprofit to have a bulk paper shredding event. That's something that's on my radar because everybody has boxes of documents they want to shred. Maybe it is a can collection. Maybe it's going around the neighborhood and cleaning up. Maybe it's weeding at your local schools so that the schools don't feel the need to spray with so much pesticide because folks in the neighborhood are coming around and they're weeding by hand. Whatever those kind of local neighborhood cleanup events are, see if you can volunteer for those. Maybe you don't have to do every one, but maybe you can make time in your schedule to do them a couple of times a year. So number six is to plug into the gift economy. I have a whole video on the gift economy, but for me, I find this has been a great way to get to know folks, get to know needs in the neighborhood and help meet those needs. Buy Nothing is a Facebook group. There are other, uh, Craigslist free page is one of them, but I love that Buy Nothing is centered in your neighborhood. And you see the same kind of folks gifting things, folks asking for things that they need. It's a way to share the surplus in our communities, but also get to know your neighbors. So there's folks who've posted something that they have and I've needed it and I've been able to go and pick it up at their house. And later when I've posted something and they need it, oh, I know who you are, I've been to your house before and I can just go drop it off. Not only are things like Buy Nothing a great way to support the gift economy, things like a little free library, a little seed library, helping see if you can find a way to fund and create a community tool library. Northeast Portland has a tool library and it's a wonderful community resource and it's something that promotes connection. So again, we as homemakers have that unique opportunity. We ha should be having an intimate relationship with our neighborhood because our work is centered in the home and our home is centered in a neighborhood. So how can we help set an example, foster the kinds of relationships and the kinds of behaviors that build a resilient community, that support local businesses, build a strong local economy and build if not bosom friendships, at least build relationships with folks in the community so you can lean on each other in times of crisis so that you can have positive relationships with your neighbors and we can all be stronger for it. Thank you for watching House for All Friday. Every Friday I talk about domestic issues, domestic skills that are appropriate for those of us engaged in ecological homemaking, but anybody who owns a home and wants to know more about domestic philosophy and domestic application of skills. I'll be back for my permaculture garden tomorrow. Check out my Patreon in the interim. Thanks.